the fact that you clicked on this video, for which I thank you very, very much, but the fact that you clicked on this video is testament to you having had similar experiences when you purchased orchids, and in this example, Phalaenopsis that come in a pot, which is rock hard, and the only media in the pot is Sphagnomos. Based on everything we know about orchid roots, your immediate reaction would be, this is terrible, the roots can't breathe, the media is suffocating the roots of my orchid, the media will be too wet for too long, I have to repot and repot straight away, etc, etc. But keep watching and I will tell you something. It is not what you think. Everything I just mentioned with a little bit of dramatic emphasis <laughs> are the first reactions many orchid growers have when they see their orchids come potted up in sphagnum moss only. There is this feeling of incredulity as the media would appear to be totally counterproductive to everything we are told about orchid roots, meaning loose media allowing for gas exchange, wet dry cycles, soggy roots, etc, etc. But many times we see this scenario when we purchase species or summer blooming Phalaenopsis in general. And then upon removal of the orchid from the pot and subsequent removal of the moss around the roots, we are astounded as to how much moss is in the pot and wonder how on earth the roots managed to stay alive in that environment. The solid mass and rock hard feel of the orchid pot only adds to that amazement. Well, long story short, know that the nurseries are not being that generous with their media. Sphagnum moss is expensive, so it is not as if they are being so generous with it that they stuff the pot full until it is rock hard and that is what you receive in the mail. Because by the time you receive your orchid in the mail with the media and roots in that condition, your orchid has been in that media for several years. Sphagnum moss breaks down over time and usually if using it exclusively as the media for your orchid, it will be necessary to refresh the media every year at least. Eight months is best though. Anyway, because in most sphagnum moss setups, the moss has to be damp all the time. That is what it is there for, to ensure the orchid always has access to moisture. And the constant dampness or wetness, depending if it was watering day or not, that degrades the moss much faster. So, what is it about these pots being rock hard, giving the impression that the moss was stuffed in ad infinitum? I hope the following will clear this up and help you out to not panic and assume your orchid roots are suffering, that you need to intervene straight away, and if done wrongly, resulting in roots actually failing because of the premature removal of the roots out of that environment. Here's the explanation why some of our phalaenopsis come in the sphagnum moss and the pot is rock hard. You see, sphagnum moss starts to degrade the moment it comes in contact with water. Once the degrading process accelerates, it starts to compact. When your orchid was first potted up in the moss, it had a few roots, and these were potted up into the moss enough to provide for the orchid, but not as generously as it would appear again. Moss is expensive, and nurseries are not throwing their media into the pot because they do not want to waste resources. So, as the moss compacts, the roots of the orchid grow to size. While the orchid is growing to the size at which the nursery puts it up for sale, the moss continues to compact and the orchid grows more and more roots. The roots add to the compacting process of the moss because they push their way through the media, taking away space where moss once was, compacting the moss even further. Fast forward five years, if we consider phalaenopsis that have been potted up as seedlings, and you have yourself a rock hard pot filled with gorgeous roots, filled with viable roots, the moss degraded after all these years because the nurseries do not invest time and money to switch the moss out during the five years that the orchid has been in the pot, which is something that we would do in our private collections. The question I hear many growers ask themselves once they unpot the orchid and see what came out of the pot is, how do they fit all this moss into the pot? Well, they didn't. They had enough moss to provide for the orchid and as it degrades it comes apart and looks as if there's more in the pot than there actually was originally. So I hope that makes sense and is an eye-opener. What is an eye-opener is your roots are fine in that pot. 
Clearly, they did not have an issue growing in the media. We love those bright green, wormy looking roots and admire how healthy they are. Then, then, we think we do right by them and give them fresh media, which won't stay as wet for so long, thinking that now they can breathe, etc., etc., and more often than not, they will fail because they are not accustomed to having so much air around them. While in the Pax Vagnum Moss, they may not have had air around them, but they had plenty of oxygen around them, which they took from the water. And there was still plenty of gas exchange as well, which they took from the degrading moss around them. In the new fresh media, they will suffocate because the Velamen is not accustomed to not having constant moisture in contact with the roots, so they are in danger of drying out. I know, it sounds crazy that we're talking about a root desiccating because we're allowing it to have oxygen around it, whereas what we're doing is removing moisture around it that it was accustomed to. So know that if you get an orchid that appears to be packed in a pot that is rock hard, filled with moss, there is no danger to the roots and you do not have to intervene to save them from suffocating. If you do not like the setup as is, wait for new roots to grow or root tips within the pot to be active and only then repot your orchid into the media or setup that you prefer for your orchids and your environment. Also, know that seeing an orchid that arrives in sphagnum moss only gives you a great hint as to just how much water your orchid will need and you can adapt your setup to meet the requirements. If you do not like working with moss as an exclusive media, make sure that you opt for seedling bark instead of chunky bark. And if you're growing in inorganic media, make sure that your media choice is made up of the smallest size of whichever media you choose, be it leca, lava rock or pumice. This minimizes the risk of the beautiful roots the orchid came with from failing and your orchid will be happy and continue growing new roots into the media of your choice. I hope that this was helpful to understand that tightly packed sphagnum moss is not indicative of the nurseries getting it wrong. On the contrary, they clearly are doing it right because hopefully the orchid you received has beautiful glossy leaves and a wonderful network of viable roots. The only thing that the nurseries could do if they invested time and money is to repot their orchids in sphagnum moss every year. Then, no one would ever receive tightly packed moss in their pots, but that would cost them a lot more, and then you would have to pay a lot more for the orchid you bought as well. If you have any questions, I have several videos how to tide your new orchid over while it is in the old media that you do not prefer. You can work with what your orchid came in for as long as it takes to grow new roots or activate root tips without any risk of losing your existing root system. You can find the video, How Long Is Too Long, linked in the description. Now that my little Phalaenopsis is actively growing its roots, I will be repotting it in a separate video. Subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on the repot video in which I will cover this topic in greater detail, but also show my take on transitioning this orchid into Lekka and a semi-hydroponic setup. But if you have seen enough orchid repotting videos, then I sincerely hope this video as a standalone was eye-opening and helpful. If so, awesome. Give this video a like, please, and a share would be greatly appreciated as well. Thank you so much also for watching. Have yourself a fabulous day on that one condition, though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.